Hello everyone, welcome to this step by step tutorial on making your first virtual reality game for Oculus devices using Unity and Meta XR all in one SDK. This is your make your first VR game, a basic tutorial to virtual reality development in Unity 2025. So whether you're a beginner or an experienced developer curious about Meta XR ecosystem, you're in the right place. Today I'll guide you through setting up your Unity with your Meta XR SDK, building a simple VR application and testing it on Oculus Quest devices. By the end of this video, you'll have a solid foundation to build an immersive VR game. So let's dive right in. Okay, so the first step is to download the Unity Hub and the Unity Editor. So what you want to do is you go to Google and you just type in download unity hub and click on the first link and after it's done loading you can click on download and it will install the unity editor into your system after that you have to open your unity hub and you will see an interface something like this but you won't see all these projects here because i created them earlier you'll need to log into your account from over here you can create your unity account and then click on preferences go to license and click add and get a free personal license. I already have one so I don't need to do this. After that you need to go to installs and download the Unity editor. The Unity hub is used for managing all your projects which you previously created and Unity editor is used to actually create those projects. So you can see I have different versions of Unity downloaded over here. You will not have them so you click on install editor, select Unity 6 LTS which stands for long term support so it is the most stable version available on the market so you click on install make sure you have the Microsoft Visual Studio community installed you have also to include Android build support open JDK, SDK and NDK and I also recommend you download the documentation click continue and it will download since I already have that so I don't need to do this step too next you will go to projects and in order to create a new project you will hit this button over here and then type in a name for your new project so I will say we are learning project 2025 give it a location we don't need to connect to unity cloud that's advanced stuff and then make sure the template is universal 3d and then hit create project after it's done creating it will open up this process does take 10 to 15 minutes so since I've already created the project I can click over here and it will open okay so the project is open in the background so there are first some things you need to know this is the interface of unity editor you can see different windows over here you can also rearrange these windows just uh, as how you like it so you can drag any window and adjust it anywhere you want or you can look into the different built-in layouts too so I can click on the tall layout but I'd prefer the default one. So inside the Unity Editor you can see these different windows so let's discuss what they do. You can see a hierarchy over here and it contains list of some objects that are present in your current scene. A scene represents your game world and the hierarchy has the list of every object that is presented in your scene. And every object presented in your scene is known as a game object. So you can see here I have some built in objects over here which are global volume, directional light and the main camera. So the main camera is used to actually look at the place you want the end user to see inside of the game. So now I'm sure you must have guessed that scene view is for the developer's perspective and the game view window represents the end user's perspective or of what he will see in his mobile or PC after the game is done building. So if we go back to the scene view, there are different ways to navigate into it. You have to drag your mouse onto the scene view, right click and hold. And then if you hover your mouse around, you can see that I can look around in an infinite 3D world. Then while holding down your right button on your mouse, you can click WASD to move around and focus on that. I'd recommend you spend like 10 minutes trying to get your hand set on these controls so you have a better range of motion inside the scene view okay so now another window is the project window now this is where you store all of the assets for your game like the 3d models sprites pieces of code 
and everything that you want to use in your game but you have not decided yet and the objects that you do want in your game that you know that you will need you can drag them from your assets into your hierarchy or your scene view now another most important window is the inspector one so if I go to hierarchy click on any object you can see here that it has listed some properties of that game object so you can see the properties of the camera I can adjust the clipping planes the field of view and there are many different settings and each game object will have like these different settings and you can also add components to give them different properties for example if I want to create a new game object inside of our scene so I'll go to hierarchy right click go to 3d objects and then click cube now you can see a cube has spawned into my scene and while clicking on the cube I can see the different properties of the cube inside of the inspector so you can see a transform component over here which represents the position, rotation and the scale of this game object in this infinite world. So if I right click on transform and hit reset, it will center its position to the center of the world and maintain its scale to 1 on all axis. Now the cube here is representing the center of my infinite world. You can also see a mesh renderer and a mesh filter over here too. The mesh represents the actual body of the object. So if I disable the mesh, you can see the object has disappeared but actually it's still in the scene view only its body has been disabled so a mesh represents the body of a game object the second component you can you can see here is the box collider now a collider is responsible for the collision of game objects so any two game objects that you would want to collide inside of your game both of them need to have some sort of collider now there are different types of collider like box collider sphere collider or mesh collider so you can explore with those options now the third thing is that we want different forces of uh, physics to act in our game so for example if I have this cube levitating up over here I want it to fall down by the force of gravity so if you want to apply all of these physical forces on your game object you will select it and go into the inspector hit set component and search for rigid body center now this rigid bodies component is responsible for applying all sorts of physical forces onto your game object like angular drag or gravity so in theory if I hit play right now the gravity should act on this cube and it should fall down so just for this example I'm gonna drag the game view down here so we can see both the developers perspective and the end users perspective simultaneously and if I hit play right here then the object should fall down if everything goes correctly and it fell down so that's perfect now this is what you would want to see in your scene now let's move on to actually adding all of the plugins and the development kits for your virtual reality we can delete this cube right now and now we can move on to importing all of the SDKs into our project so first you will also need to download those SDKs from the Unity Asset Store. So you have to go to Google and type in Unity Asset Store and then click on this link. After this done opening, you will need to log in from your account from over here. You need to click sign in and you can sign in from Google. I've already done this from this window and now you need to search for Meta XR all-in-one SDK and once it's done loading then you can locate the SDK over here okay so looks like I'll need to log in give me a moment all right so I'm logged in now you can see the meta XR all-in-one SDK over here you can also see different SDKs over here but all-in-one represents that all of these SDKs will be imported into this one package so that's what I'd recommend you so you click on the meta XR all-in-one SDK you can see an add to my assets button over here you will click on the add to my assets button then you will click on open in unity so since I've already added this to my assets then I can just click open in unity and then it will open up a new window inside my unity editor and that window is of package manager you can see over here I'll also tell you how you can open it by yourself inside the unity editor too so if you go into windows and package manager you can see that the window has opened over here now you also need to be in the window of my assets which is this one and then you will search for 
meta xr all in one sdk so it will refresh the list and you can see that i have the sdk over here if you don't have the sdk in this list then you need to go back to the asset store again and try to re-import it so now i'm gonna click on install and it will take a moment to install this sdk okay so once the project is done importing you will be prompted to restart your unity editor so just go ahead and click restart now it will ask you to save your scene click save and then now we'll wait for the project to restart okay so after the project has restarted the meta xr sdk will be imported into your project it will prompt you to use your interaction sdk ovr hands so we'll go for keep using ovr hands from here click ok and now we are ready so we'll import just one more sdk so if you go into file build profile and then click on player setting from over here then we can see another window opens up where you can see the project settings so you can give a product name which you want to see when you install the apk into your headset so now we'll go down from this left panel and you can see an xr plugin management the xr plugin management will provide you with the packages that will configure your project for virtual reality and augmented reality so we hit install xr plugin management and then just after a little while it will load up the plugin into our project okay so the plugin is now installed into our project we will just give it a few seconds and it will enable all of these checkboxes so there are two important checkboxes that you want to know of so first one is oculus and the second is openxr both of them are fine for a virtual reality project but i'd recommend you go for the oculus because the oculus plugin is specifically designed for the meta xr devices like quest 2 3 and 1 and if you want to use some other vr device like the pico 4 headset or mock hmd then i'd recommend you go for the open xr so after it has done loading you need to make sure that initialize xr on startup is also checked so now our project is completely ready for virtual reality so how do we create a player controller for vr so there are some basic building blocks that meta xr sdk provides us so if you go into the meta tools and click on building blocks you can see different building blocks over here which are ready to use assets which you can use in your scene to get started with vr development in just a matter of few clicks you can see different items over here you can also search them by categories from over here so first thing we need in our scene is a camera rig so i'll click on the add block to the current scene and you can see it has added a camera rig block into our scene a camera rig is basically a virtual reality player controller that we will use in our game second thing that we want along with the camera rig is the ability to track our left and right controller so we'll also add the controller tracking module you can see that it has been added as a child of the camera rig then we would also need to see our virtual hands in the project so i'm also going to add that into the scene and just for little interactions i think we can also add a touch grab cube so let's also add that so this is a cube which you can grab into your scene world so if we remove this window from over here and if we double click on the cube you can see that i have focused on it and it's currently overlapping the player controller so we move a little back we turn off the gizmo so that the icons are not displaying here anymore and we can move the cube a little bit to the front of the player you can see that i'm not seeing it inside of the game view let's see where it is okay here it is I have moved the cube a little bit further away from the player just so that it's not overlapping the player. So now our project is completely ready for build. So we can hit Ctrl S to save the current project progress. And now if we go to File, Build Profiles, now we need to add this scene into our scene list. You can see that this scene is already added. If it's not added for you, 
then you can just go into the scene list click add open scenes and it will add the scene which are currently open into your list now we can go back to the android in order to build the apk we need to click on build but before that we have to make sure that there is some sort of ground our player can stand on because right now when we play the player will just fall down because there is no ground to catch him so we go to our hierarchy right click 3d object and we will create a plane you can see the plane is above the player right now so we can go to its transform right click and reset so it's in the center of our world now we can move the camera a little bit upwards and same for the cube so it's not on the ground itself okay now we can control s and save now we can build this application so we go back to build profiles click on build and give a name like testing vr 2025 and press enter it will tell you that two types of active input handling has been set at active in your project so let's ignore that for now and click yes now it will build the apk for us which we can side load into our headset and test it out so until it's building the apk let me tell you how you can side load that into your headset so you go to google you will search for download side quest and get side quest and you want to install the advanced installer don't go for the web installer so we'll click on download the advanced installer and once you have downloaded and installed it into your system you can search for side quest hit enter and inside the side quest you can see that not connected is being displayed to me so now we need to connect our headset with a type c cable and once it's connected you will have to wear your headset and allow it to access files from your pc and vice versa and then it will show you the name of the headset over here now in order to install the apk you can see a button right here so we'll click on install apk file from folder on the computer then we will locate our apk for example if we have a testing vr over here we will select that and click on open then it will install the apk to your system right now i have not connected a device so it will give me an error so after the end of this video i will attach a in-game video of the application that we have just built and if you have watched this video carefully and have followed every step exactly the same way i did it then you will have your first vr application completely built and ready for use this is just a basic video to create the first vr project and as we move further into this playlist we will create our first shooting game inside of vr so stay tuned subscribe to my channel and i hope we will create an amazing game together